Hi there, it's Chris Betcher here. I'd like to take you on a little tour of Maps Engine Lite, a new tool from Google. As you can see on the front page here, uh, the mantra is draw, import, organize, and style. Um, so we can add places to a map, we can import data into a map, and we can organize it, which is great, and we can also style it up. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I'm gonna click on the new map button down here, and it will open up a new mapping service for Maps Engine. And here we are here. So it looks it looks a lot like normal maps, except it's got this panel up here in the corner, and in this panel is where we're going to actually put our data in. Now you can do simple things like if I just sort of uh, zoom in here somewhere, and let's say I wanted to mark somewhere, maybe these lakes here. I was doing an outback trip and want to somehow mark these lakes. Um, I can just simply click on the marker here, and then come in here and, and drop a marker, and I can give it a name. I can call it uh, lakes I want to visit. For example, um, so you can you can simply drop pins in like that. Uh, you, you might have noticed here I can add a description, so I can type anything I like in there. So that's that's one way to put points on a map. Um, and of course, it's collaborative. You can see there's a share button up in the corner here, so I could share this map with other people the same way you share most uh, Google Docs, and other people could work on it. They could also drop pins in it. Now it's not real time collaborative in the sense that you won't see other people dropping pins on the map. Uh, as they're working, um, you'll, you'll see their added data whenever you refresh the page. So just bear that in mind. It's not sort of collaborative in the same sense that Google Docs is, but it is collaborative. Um, you can see over here on the side here, it's it's created the pin here, and, and you can style the pin up. So if I click on the little paint bucket on the side here, you can see I can change the color of the pin. I could make it purple. I could make it orange. I could come down here and choose a shape for it. Um, so I might have a star, for example, or I can go to more icons, and you can see I've got a whole bunch of other icons I could pick that I could mark that with. So it's a lake. Let's put a, a recreational paddler, and when we say OK, you can see it's turned that into a little icon. So that's that's a really simple way of just dropping in um, pins. You can also, if, if it's an area, there is also the ability here to add a line or shape. So you see if I click on that tool there, I could say, uh, you know, I'm talking about this particular area here, for example, and I could go and mark that area there. I could give it a name, um, you know, what we call this special area. And again, I could give it a description and so on. So and you see over on the side here that those things that I'm adding in actually just go into my list. So it's a really nice, simple, easy way of uh, adding points of interest to a map. That's great, but here's the thing I really want to show you, and that is the ability to import data to a Maps Engine map. And let's just go over here. So on the, on this page that I've set up, there's a few sample data sets. So a data set is typically a, a, a spreadsheet or a CSV file with information in it. Let me open one for you. So uh, this, this data sheet here, for example, this is uh, just a, a set of data that I found on the internet. Um, it's actually a list of uh, all the developments that are taking place in uh, Southern Africa that have been funded by the African Development Bank. Uh, and so you can see we have a bunch of information in here, the start date, the finish date, how much it cost, which sector it belongs to, which country it's going into. And importantly, it has two columns here for longitude and latitude. Um, now, for this to work in Maps Engine, you do need a spreadsheet that contains some sort of uh, geographic data. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to import the data set, this one here, the African Development Bank data, onto this map. Now, I realize we're pointing at Australia at the moment. The data is for Africa. That doesn't matter, as you'll see. So let's just call this uh, African Development Projects. Okay, and I could, I could write a short description there, but I'll just leave that blank for now. So I'm going to click this import button here and go and find the data. Now, if it's a CSV or a, a Excel sheet, you can actually just click the blue button and upload it uh, into here. But it is in my Google Drive. So it's this one here, African Development Bank Project. So I'm just going to click on that and say select. And what it's doing now is it's just requesting access to my Google Drive. And because I'm signed in, it's just it's allowed that to happen. You might need to click OK if you've not done it before. And it's realized that this is the data that's in the spreadsheet, and it's uh, auto-detected the fact there is a latitude and longitude um, column, one for each. So it's it's the first question here is to pick the columns that contain the positional, the geographic information, and it is those two columns, so I'll just say continue. And the next thing it says is which column do we want to use as markers? 
Um, now you could you can really use any of these. Um, I am going to probably just use sector, okay? And you'll see why in a second. Let's click finish, and you can see over here it's importing that layer in. And depending on the size of the layer, it can take uh, just a moment to bring it in like that. By the way, you are limited to uh, 100 points in a layer. So uh, unfortunately, I mean, there is a there is a paid product called Maps Engine, um, which you can have an unlimited number of points. But in Maps Engine Lite, the free version, you're limited to 100 points per layer and three layers per map. Okay, so just something to bear in mind. Now, as you can see, uh, just from that data sheet, I've been able to import all of these pins in that represent all the development projects that were contained on that spreadsheet. Okay, you can see that it's dropped it into the correct countries and the correct places. And it's a lot easier to start to intuit some information from that data rather than just looking at the spreadsheet. So I can see that there's a lot of heavy development over here in Mozambique, uh, a lot here in um, eastern Botswana, uh, not so much in Namibia. And so it, it's a nice visual way of seeing stuff. Now, un, when you import a layer in, it picks up the layer name here, and you've got a couple of things here. You could turn on labels. So for example, I could turn on a label and say, show me the, um, the sector name next to each one. And if I just, I might just zoom in a little bit so you can see a little more clearly what's going on there. Um, you can see that it's labeled each one of those points with the sector name from the data sheet. I could also go with, say, the subsector name. I could also look at things like the start date. And so whatever you pick there, uh, it can label that point with that information. The second thing to know about is there's a button here that says data. And if I click on that, it actually opens up the sheet. And you can see there is the spreadsheet. You can see the location information has been marked with these yellow icons. Now, the other thing to know, there's a search here. So if there was something in the table I wanted to find, like say power, um, I've just done a search and I've filtered down to all the power. If I wanted to say all the um, points in um, Botswana, you can see as I'm typing there, it's starting to filter down the sheet. So very easy to find something, some information in the sheet there, just like that. Um, and the other thing that is good to know about is this thing called style. Now, if I click on style, at the moment, the pins are all a uniform style. That means they're all the same. You can see they're all this, um, this pinky pinky orangey color but if I click and if I don't like that pinky orangey color by the way I can just click on the paint bucket and I can make them say I don't know uh, green or blue okay so I can change that I can change the shape I can I can do all of the stuff that uh, we talked about before that's when it's a uniform style the other thing you can do is say individual styles and when it's an individual style each pin is treated individually and I can go down here and I can say show me just that pin in orange and you can see that that one pin there has been um, changed to color and it, it's a little bit awkward because you do have to do each pin individually if you if you want to run individual styles but uh, that's a possibility the next one down is to style the data by a column so for example let's uh, let's pick sector and what it will then do is it will pick up all the different sectors and color them so all the transport ones for example are the orange all the um, environment ones are this sort of uh, aqua blue. Uh, finance ones are this sort of pale greeny color. And so that's one way to do it. Now, if I pick a different um, uh, data column, so if I look at the start date, for example, now it's a little bit awkward here because I've got lots of different start dates, but you can see it's color coding by start date, or I could do it by um, you know, subsector. So that's a kind of nice thing to do. Now, if I was to go into things like, say, the, um, let's try, uh, let's try start date, okay? And instead of just seeing all of them, let's put them in a range. So I've put them in four ranges, and it's de auto detected the fact that there are some dates between the 1st of January 2008 and the, the 15th of October 2010. And then here's another date range, here's another date range, here's another date range. And so it's actually color coding them based on the date range. And if I want more date ranges, I can just choose a different number there. If I want less, I can pick a smaller number. And so again, that's a nice, easy way to, to see more visually the information in the sheet. If I don't like the colors, I've got some different color choices here I can pick. So 
that's just a little over uh, overview there of the sorts of things you can do with Maps Engine Lite, either by dropping pins and marking areas yourself manually, or more importantly, from taking the data from something like a spreadsheet that contains this data and importing it into the sheet, having it automatically map, and then getting all this sort of nice control here about uh, how you actually display those pins on the map.